Fear is a weapon of mass destruction. This is psychological warfare. The virus didn't send us running to the supermarkets. The media did. The biggest virus on this planet is the media, and it's a killer. And just like that, the media and the government that owns them. Those who control all sporting events, concerts, jobs, colleges, medical facilities, whether or not you can leave your house and have depleted resources such as toilet paper and food. That controls all travel. Has developed viruses to scare the public. They now control you and everything about your life. See how easy it was. Mass panic, hysteria. Complete control of literally the world, over a virus. One that survival rates are extremely high. All freedom has been limited overnight. This is already martial law. See how easy that was. Surely it will become a real crime to point out the bankers and what they have done to the world when martial law is declared. Whole states and cities commanding their citizens to quarantine and home over some virus, sounds a lot like martial law to me. And if it happens nationwide, then definitely we have martial law in place. Well, the supposed numbers are up to 10,000 new cases. We have 88 deaths today. This is going to blow up badly in a week with martial law across the country. Give it less than 30 days, and they come for the guns. Crime will explode and riots everywhere if you live in a big liberal city. You're in serious trouble of living throughout this. Restriction of movement will only be temporary, just like our first income tax was temporary to pay down the costs of the civil war. America is entering permanent martial law. It really does seem that way, does it not? The world you knew is over, and no, it wasn't because of a virus. I wonder if they had a pre-written COVID-19 act, similar to the Patriot Act, to permanently remove our rights. And now that the Fed has endless and unlimited QE to purchase treasuries and a multi-trillion dollar bailout for their bankster friends. Get back to work slaves. You are expendable. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you. For a few days now Americans have seen surreal scenes play out in their backyards. Entire cities on lockdown. The Navy and National Guard deployed, flights cancelled, borders tightened. Most people have never seen anything like this in their entire life ordering non-essential businesses to close their doors, shuttering schools, leaving many families to wonder how they are going to make ends meet. Tonight, one out of three Americans is under government orders to stay at home. And at least 17 states have ordered non-essential businesses to close. In some states, large gatherings are altogether banned. But how far can the government go in taking away our civil liberties? And could we see here in the United States more extreme restrictions like those in China and parts of Europe? In times like these, even our civil liberties, the bedrock of our constitution can be restricted. As we potentially enter uncharted legal waters are being tested. What is really important in times such as this, and that's the real test. When China was first hit with the new coronavirus back in December, its totalitarian government responded with regional crackdowns. We watched as populated cities went dark, and saw the consequences when people disobeyed orders. At the time, it felt like their policies could never be implemented here. China is a communist country, America is a democracy. China's quarantine measures seem to have worked. For now, the reported number of domestic cases is down to nearly zero. But now that the US is facing a daily surge of new cases, Governments are imposing rules that are changing the day-to-day -day lives of Americans. So what are the laws during a pandemic? The states have broad powers to quarantine and ban large gatherings, and President Trump can completely close the US border. But his power to quarantine has limits. And when he declared a national emergency under the Stafford Act, it just gives him the power to redirect federal funds and resources. President Donald Trump declared a national state of emergency on Friday as the coronavirus continues to spread in the United States. The pandemic is affecting millions, and the National Guard is assisting with basic necessities in some states. That's exactly what the government wants you to believe. It's all lies and propaganda designed to control people who can't think for themselves, and instead listen to the idiot talking heads on TV. We saw Europe close its borders, major cities are completely shutting down. 
something that hasn't happened since World War II. In some countries, people have been fined just for being outside. In Australia, there is an outright ban on international travel. That means, no Australian is allowed to travel overseas. Some other countries are increasingly using technology to keep close tabs on their citizens' movements. In South Korea, officials use surveillance and credit card data to track down those infected. In Italy and Israel, governments are following potential patients using their cell data. The government has quickly turned to health as being its wedge issues in order to carry out what would otherwise be a political agenda. But in the US, we might see pushback against too many restrictions on civil liberties. And it could be up to individuals and the courts to keep the government in check. It's not unpatriotic to hold our government accountable. Let's get one thing straight. In terms of capacity to kill you, COVID-19 is an extraordinarily weak virus. The fatality rates being thrown around are all over the place, 8% for Italy, 3.4% from WHO, 2% from the early days for China. But there is a good reason to believe all of these are nonsensical. They're accurate for what they represent, which is the ratio between recorded instances of infection and fatalities where infection was present, but they are absolutely not the fatality rate of the COVID-19 infection. Data from Italy suggests the median age of fatalities is 79.5 years, where Italian life expectancy is 82.5 years. Of the 2,500-plus victims, only 17 were under 50. Also, 99% of all fatalities had pre-existing conditions. This shutdown of the economy is the real danger, we will suffer strong deflationary pressures, but this is the legacy of the financialized bubble of everything. We will all suffer as the economy works through the popping of the bubble, popping the bubble is necessary, and it was inevitable. The key is that our future must not become a restart of the old system or the start of something worse. In this, the coronavirus was changed the playing field. The headwinds are against globalization. It will be a new world order after the coronavirus. Only it won't be the one the demonic globalists were trying to inflict on us. These elites are utterly crazy to think ordering people off the streets and behind closed doors under the threat of jail if one does not obey is actually going to stop it all. They are fools. I see the government using the virus to collapse the economy. This is more panic than plague. If an evil genius was thinking of ways to make martial law acceptable, they could not think of a better way than this. Everyone, voluntarily self-isolates and praises the boots on the streets. Panics from pandemics unleash unchecked governmental power. The very premise of popular films like V for Vendetta reveals this, a group uses a virus to seize power and create a totalitarian society. Our founders were intimately familiar with pandemics, viruses, and plagues, yet they did not allow any to suspend our constitutional liberties. Not one word in the Constitution about plagues or pandemics to exempt the government from any of our Bill of Rights. Why do our current courts allow it? Because the public is asleep at the wheel. This is cover for all their bailout thievery and civil rights grabs. Detention without hearing outlawing encrypted email, communication whatever else I missed. I am sure there is a lot. And if your or your children don't get the vaccine, you will be jailed. Many small businesses are already dead. Now the money comes so the vultures can pick the bones, with free credit, and prep the cycle again. Throwing a couple of grand at the people will merely keep a high percentage from shooting anyone that they perceive to have wronged them. Banks will be made whole, and the stinky debt shuffled to their daddy fed, marked to myth, and they will be ready to gorge themselves on the blood of the people. The American people were warned by their forefathers to periodically shut down their government and restart it so that it wouldn't get too big and out of control. Too late. There are plenty of reasons to be highly skeptical of the massive shutdown of our society demanded by governments over the coronavirus. Yes, it is a potentially dangerous flu virus. But what if the consequences of the shutdown are worse than the virus itself? What this will do is cause the Great Depression. If you look at the number of people in China who had it and the number recovered in deaths, you will find that all of this media and government response is blown out of perspective. What I have noticed is the Democrats are quick to shut things down business, and families will be hurt. This is the greatest opportunity for the banksters to run the country into the ground. I hate curfews, big brother or big sister coming from the government, martial laws or violations to my constitution rights based on war, etc. Of course, we need control if and only if it is necessary. 
I love my freedom, and its responsibility. The business community must invest in science, mainly infectious diseases. We need more investment in science. Stop corruption in the US government. The federal government always responds militarily. The operative language in the Constitution that would be used to cover this response is the undefined term, invasion. It doesn't say the invaders must be human. They can be viruses. I think there is more in all this than meets the eye. We see history in real time, and yet we're so engulfed in it that we don't see the big picture. We're accused of spreading conspiracy theories, and yet history is full of conspiracies. So we're asked to ignore everything we see and follow the leader, and we have no idea who the leader is because the real power is hidden. Our principles and rights are being made obsolete, and our basic necessities have been outsourced, and yet we're asked to ignore the bad stuff because we're the richest nation in the world. Something is rotten in paradise. When the government grows too big, it has to implode at some point. Has the time arrived for the US to implode? The power that be need the noise from the virus to drown out the noise coming from the financial collapse. Everyone staying at home and communicating via the internet means that the government won't get any surprises from public-private gatherings of angry people conversing amongst themselves. First, they sent smallpox-infected blankets to the Native Americans, now COVID to us. Massive social distancing, with its accompanying job losses, stock dives, and huge bailouts to corporations, raises the threat of a depression. But it doesn't have to be this way. History offers us another alternative in such situations, a debt jubilee. This slate cleaning, balance restoring step recognizes the fundamental truth that when debts grow too large to be paid without reducing debtors to poverty, the way to hold society together and restore balance is simply to cancel the bad debts. Even before the novel coronavirus appeared, many American families were falling behind on student loans, auto loans, credit cards, and other payments. America's debt overhead was pricing its labor and industry out of world markets. A debt crisis was inevitable eventually, but COVID-19 has made it worse. A debt jubilee is the only way to avoid a depression. China is already a mixed mess. India is soon to be a disaster. Much of Europe is shuddering. Why place Americans at undue risk, when the whole of the earth is facing economic difficulties? Whether you agree with it or not doesn't matter. Things in the economy are just not going to go well for a while. It's not a matter of opinion or views. There's simply nothing we can do about it. America is entering into soft communism. People will be used as slaves to repay the debts from the old system. Have you ever seen such idiocy in all your life as is on full display today with our politicians? They are busy jockeying for position to cram their pet projects into economic bailouts, without support for funding, while the entire country collapses economically. Even the Lehman collapse in 2008 looks mild compared to this. Supply chains broken, small businesses are going broke, executive orders coming from governors now requiring people to stay home and wait indefinitely. By the time the dust settles, the financial damage will be beyond measure. I really believe the only reason why they are doing this now is that no statistics are available to measure the collapse in sales, tax receipts, economic activity. Goldman projects at minimum a 24% collapse in GPD. But I really doubt these politicians even grasp what this does to any recovery. Thinking there will be a quick snap back recovery is delusional. Nothing like this has ever happened before, and yet they think getting funding now to businesses is going to solve the problem they have created. Sorry. Permanent damage has been done. Not only to our economy but the world, since we buy so much from them, travel to its locations, spend travel money there and circulate freely. Not anymore. I think the economic collapse happening in real time is unprecedented and will surpass that in many ways of the 1929 crash. This is all man-made through inception with bad policy choices and bad advice from idiot academics and our medical experts like the WHO and CDC. What the WHO and the CDC have orchestrated is beyond belief. The World Health Organization and CDC have chosen to destroy the economy rather than expand hospital capacity. I am sorry, but no one in their right mind would have done this. They have put out these stay-at-home scenarios to justify destroying the economy under the claim there will not be enough hospital beds to help people. China built makeshift hospitals to handle the patient overflow in days. This virus is the perfect chance to prostitute the financial system, as broken as it is. 
This gives companies an unprecedented opportunity to hide all sorts of bodies in the statistical noise of corona collapse. You wait this quarter's numbers will look bad, but what a way to hide the truth and prepare to make next Q's numbers look stellar. Then again, I don't think these companies were counting on soft martial law to do the kind of damage that's being done by design. The only pandemic threatening the world is the stupidity pandemic. Take a flu virus, hype it with media and ignorant politician hysteria, and destroy the world economy for an excuse to have one last money printing bacchanal and orgy. This virus was created to crash many world economies, no more family-run businesses. It will be big industries that need to step in. It's create a problem that causes chaos, then present a solution that will help implement change that you want and that the people will be more accepting of. They are busy jockeying for position to cram their pet projects into economic bailouts, without support for funding, while the entire country collapses economically. Because they know Corona was engineered for a reset. When a crisis is manufactured, they jam all sorts of pork into the repair bill. This country is long overdue for violence and a paradigm shift. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a small donation. Thank you.